Daggummit. Daggummit, Wilkies. It's another episode of That's Good Broncos podcast. Philly Rivers announces his retirement today. The same day, a certain president also had to retire. Quite fitting. Uh, we've got some Broncos news to dive into. A new GM introduced himself. Von Miller will update you on that because we haven't talked about it yet. And today's episode brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up at America's top-rated sportsbook app to take advantage of their can't-miss offers. And my coffee company, BenchWarmerBrew.com. Craft roasted, organic, ethically sourced, really delicious coffee. Um, we're live. We're online. So if you want to support this show, the coffee is a way you can do it. Uh, Will, let's start with Philip Rivers retiring. Um, I thought he was gonna. I thought he was gonna play one more year. I knew he only signed for one year in Indy. But in terms of the way he looked this season, physically, he was good. He was better this year than he was the, the year before. He was safer with the football for the most part. And uh, they made it to the postseason. He played well despite the fact that the Colts lost. And so I thought, based on that, that he would come back for another season. So I was a little bit surprised. Uh, wanted to get your, your thoughts on – oh, wait, wait. Before I get your thoughts – I saw this in e on an ESPN article. Philip Rivers waited until January 20th to announce his retirement because it's the Roman Catholic Church's boning day for St. Sebastian, often referred to as the patron saint of procreation. So very fitting for Philip Rivers to choose this day specifically. Is that true? Because that saint had anything to do with being considered the saint of athletes what i said is the truth just so everybody knows okay or right. you said it we're gonna stick with it damn right yeah i thought i thought phil played his best football at the end of the year yeah and i think i thought he played really well in that playoff game came up short as he often does in those situations but <laughs> this time um, it wasn't mostly his fault <laughs> yeah he still played just some good crafty phil rivers football like always converting you know you get him in a third and five you know he's hitting the crossing route for six yards there yeah that's yeah. like that's his legacy to me is uh the king of crossing routes the king of picking up six on a third and five yeah the king of uh you think you've got him dead to rights and then he just shuffles up in the pocket one step and gets the ball off the last second um he really started to do that at the end of the year for the colts in the middle of the season he was kind of in trouble and i think a lot of colts fans were wondering when they were going to bench him and put in jacoby Brissett or when we're going to put in jacob Eason or what have you so um i think if you get that like the last six weeks six weeks of the year phil rivers um you got a really good quarterback you don't know which one you're going to get you know a, a year older and, and a year later from now um but i'm glad he he went on he went out on top and, you know, he kind of had the choice, like I could come back or I could call it quits now. And he didn't wait until he, uh, you know, until the Colts retired him basically, but it creates another team that needs a quarterback this year. So the, the carousel is spinning. Yeah. It's there's spinning once again, there's, it's weird, right? Because um, like, Last year, we were talking about how a lot of teams didn't need a quarterback. Um, and you yeah. had this kind of weird offseason. This year, there's a bunch of quarterbacks that are probably going to be shuffled around or moved. There's like teams that don't need a quarterback, but not, might not have a quarterback next year. Or Houston. <laughs> Houston, Houston, the Falcons, Miami. the Lions, the, you know. It's just crazy. Right. And now like the Eagles are going to go with Carson Wentz over Jalen Ram or Jalen Ramsey, <laughs> Jalen hurts probably. So there's all sorts of things. Um, but like when you looked at how Drew Brees played in that last game, it was just, it's like he, it's time for him to retire. His body's telling right. him no more football. And I never, it just, like you're right in the middle season didn't rivers kind of have like a 
ankle or knee or foot thing or something that was like not a serious yeah. injury, but um, I know they were bringing through anything. So yeah, but nothing's really going to set him down. No, uh, an Iron Man. Uh, I I saw JJ Watt post about uh, like his favorite Philip Rivers moment was. Um, on one of the plays rivers pointed out the linebacker was in the wrong place on the, the blitz they were about to bring. And JJ said yeah. rivers was a hundred percent correct. So yeah, uh, there's, there's like actually footage of that. Oh yeah. We got to find that. Then. It was on a, uh, yeah, it was on mic'd up. Yeah, no, he, he did that. He has, yeah, definitely one of the greatest mic'd up quarterbacks of all time. I yeah. can't, honestly, I can't think of a close second. In no, terms and of it's, quarterbacks, at least. It's so much better, too, that he doesn't swear because he talks so much trash. And it makes yeah. it more entertaining because it's his grown man saying he's... Yeah, he's usually crazy. when you have, like, trash talk coming at each other, it's just, like, it's it's totally messed up. Like, bleep, 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 bleep. You can't hear it. You, you feel like you're being cheated. But, yeah. but Phil, you get to hear every, you know, every last word of it. So it's special. Very special. Uh, Rivers, though... As much as we talk about him and all of his his children, he leaves he leaves the league fourth in most children. Uh, Antonio yeah. Cromartie, fourteen, number one. Travis Henry, two at eleven. Willis McGahey, which I did not realize has ten kids, <laughs> and then Rivers with nine, and then there's a bunch of quarterbacks who have seven. That's crazy because you had a. Um... In Buffalo for a couple of seasons, Travis and Henry, Travis Henry and Willis McGahey were in the same backfield. Oh damn! He had twenty-one kids between the the two of them, and that's stupid. I think Travis Henry, eleven kids. I think uh, eleven moms too, something like that. Yeah, I think that was Travis Henry for sure. Yeah, he was really spreading them out. Yeah, you know, I look at this a little bit differently now because I have a kid. Uh -huh. And uh, I think these men are even more insane. <laughs> yeah. After uh, after totally. learning like how much work one child is, to think about these these people with nine, ten, eleven kids, that's fucking chaos. I mean, <laughs> I don't. I think uh, it's the chaos. NFL the NFL money makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, I'm sure you can hire some help, but I mean, like I know Travis Henry was, he was hurting for money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. No uh, question about it. Cromartie and McGahey, probably fine. And I think Antonio Cromartie got uh, his wife or I think it's his wife uh, pregnant after having a vasectomy. So um, he, not Rivers, has the He's strongest the sperm in NFL history. <laughs> Yeah, man. No, just as sure as, as Phil Rivers would fit the ball in between two defenders, you know that that sperm is passing through anything. But yeah, Antonio Cromartie, underrated. They kind of tried to get him back in uh, hard knocks that year with the Jets, trying to get him to name all of his kids and made him look a little bit stupid. But yeah, I, I, heard I remember like that. They, they kind of like tried to do a few takes until he kind of slipped up for a second. So, I don't know. I don't know what to think there. I also saw that Ryan Fitzpatrick and Cam Newton both have seven kids themselves, yep. which Cam yep. is – Cam's young for seven. Cam's right? – I knew that, though. Yeah, Fitzmagic I thought he had, like, lot, three, two or three. A lot of quarterbacks have a lot of kids. It's kind of weird. Anyway, yeah. we wanted to to bring our our favorite Phillip Rivers moments uh, to, to pay homage as he uh, – retires with his 63,440 passing yards behind only Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and Brett Favre. Eight Pro Bowl Pro Bowls, uh, fifth in league history with 421 touchdown passes, again behind those same guys. <laughs> um, so when you think about – Philip Rivers, uh, we obviously have beaten the fourth quarter interceptions thing over the head. The dead horse is dead. I would, well, I would argue he did that. Yeah, he did that. And <laughs> I was looking, uh, I, I watched like a couple of Philip Rivers videos this morning. And one of them was just, uh, it was like 
four oh, was minutes it of Philip Rivers, Rivers chucking up for three minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watched the same one before before I came on. I was like, oh, I fuck, he really, he really did. He really did throw yeah. a lot of bad passes in the fourth quarter. It wasn't just a narrative. It, no, it's, it's very much the truth. Yeah. It Which, was a thing. I think, like, if you're going to talk, if you're going to have a Hall of Fame debate against him, that's a good reason why, even though he has all those numbers, which don't get me wrong, are impressive. But if you hang around long enough in the NFL, you're going to get some some pretty big numbers. Uh, not to say Rivers wasn't great, but uh, that's a, a fun debate maybe to have at a different time. Um, but we'll just go back and forth with some of our favorite moments. I didn't rank them in any real order. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I – I don't want to um, choose who's my favorite child right? out of all these memories. I just kind of <clears> want to um, experience and, and, and remember and, and love all of them equally, but I'll let you, I'll let you start. Uh, I'll start with one of my favorite Philip Rivers moments was him blowing a 24 to zero lead to Peyton Manning in 2012. He ended up throwing four interceptions in that game. Chargers had six turnovers as the Broncos went into halftime down 24 points. Can you Just, name all four? Can you name the people who, who picked off the rivers in that game? Um, Chris Harris. Yep. Champ Bailey. Nope. Ooh. Then nope. <laughs> Some, so you got two Chris Harris ones, including the pick six. And then a Tony, Tony Carter interception. Sticky man. Yep. <laughs> and then Jim Leonard. Jim Leonard. Yeah. Oh. Was he playing safety or linebacker? He was playing safety slash punt returner. Punt returner, <laughs> yeah. Game. I remember Jim Leonard. And I watched that with John Na. I watched that game with John Na, who no he's way. had on this podcast. <laughs> uh, and I've never seen somebody go from being so confident to just miserable. Like, not even <laughs> mad, just fucking depressed. I've got a photo of him from that game where he's just looking at his phone, sitting in the corner. It's kind of dark and alone in my apartment corner. Uh, I felt bad for him. Uh, but that's when I was like, Peyton Manning is this team. This team can because we were, about to drop, we were about to drop to like two and four yeah. and start questioning things. And they didn't, yeah. they didn't lose for the rest of the regular season after that. Yep. So, that was yep. yeah, that's great. Um, just for uh, the sake of diversity, and I think you had this too, so we'll, we'll talk about this one together, but Monday Night Football back in December 2007, he was yelling at Jay Cutler. He and a couple other guys were yelling at Jay Cutler, who was by himself in the middle of the field. And uh, I think that's when we all came together to really, really hate Philip Rivers yeah. for a while. That's when I was like, this dude, to, this guy is disrespectful to my Broncos. I shall hate yeah. him forever. And uh, he did look, he did come off like a huge pussy <laughs> in that clip. <laughs> like, there's no getting around it. No, you we it, forgive him, but uh, I hated that Rivers. Was a great look for him. I hated Philip Rivers about as much as I hated Tom Brady at one point. I did too. Yeah. So, but like, once you realized he was never a threat, it became comical. So, yeah, yeah he became a tragic figure. And I'll, I'll probably pinpoint it where he did become a tragic figure, but um, yeah, the Jay Cutler feud. Yeah, I think so. Okay. My uh, sec second favorite Philip Rivers moment was Derek, Derek Wolf saying he shut Rivers up by telling him he would eat his children. <laughs> that was great. I saw Ryan Green uh, retweet that, that clip today or tweet that clip today. And it is, it's, it's, it's simultaneously Derek Wolf's best moment uh, and my Philip Rivers best moment. That was a great one. I'm gonna go with that mic'd up clip from last year, 2019, Chargers at Jacksonville, mm -hmm. and Phil Rivers throws a 90 yard little bubble screen touchdown to Austin Eckler. Gets up after getting knocked down by Yannick Ngakwe and yells like 90 yard touchdown in his face. I think it was only like an 84 yard touchdown. So chill out, Phil. Uh, and like Bill Vinovich, the ref, kind of separates them. He's like, you don't have to get in my ears. Like, I will get in your ear. <laughs> he does that shit and like just stomps around like an idiot. Uh, and it's just, that's just Phil. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty that's sure. Phil getting hyped up at a, you know, 
blowout against the Jags. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like Ngakwe just started laughing by the end of that that thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was it's a like, great. What moment. the hell am I supposed to do? I'm on the Jags. What do you want? What do you want? I th- I thought about putting that in here. Um, yeah, we kind of the feud with Jay Cutler, but also the Ed Hockley game where uh, the Broncos were gifted a win by the referee. Uh, yeah, Philip Rivers not happy on the sideline. If I recall, I remember him like freaking out in that game. I was uh, pretty happy. Yeah, I watched that one up up in the mountains. It's like when you remember those games that for me that are that long ago, you know they're they're important. Like I was at my buddy's cabin and just looking like yeah. we were gonna lose that game, and then we we're gonna have like a long drive home and just be pissed. But the Broncos get the win, and it was just like, it, all right, sweet. <clears throat> that was a terrific one um i have the a game from 2015 the broncos won 17 to 3 not a very exciting game but phil rivers threw a pick six and this is kind of where it, it became hard to hate him and he just became kind of a tragic pathetic figure in my eyes was von miller like holding him up by the collar like right in front of the referee late in that game you can probably find images of it but you just made Phil look so small for a second. <laughs> and I was like, I don't like, I, I used to hate this man more than anybody uh, back in the mid two thousands. And it kind of just all evaporated after that. Yeah. You saw his vul- vulnerability. So yeah, absolutely. Um, one from this season was watching Philip Rivers get hurdled on a tackling attempt after a turnover to the Ravens. He just flops onto his back and tries to throw his hands up and gets leapt over. It was a, a yeah. classic. It's, it's a modern classic. Yeah, modern classic. Philip Rivers archives. Yeah, and then to round it out, we talked we talked about it, but just kind of that feeling in every Chargers or or late. You know, I'll even include some Colts games this year, but they're driving down, you know, a touchdown. They need to get in the end zone. It's late. Like it's like kind of a sleepy point in the afternoon on a Sunday and Phil throws a, throws an ill-advised interception across the middle to end the game. So I could point to a million, you know, instances of that, but I would, I would check out the the video that Brandon and I watched, which is, Philip Rivers choking for three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's all I have to search on YouTube. Uh, I think my number one, I said I didn't rank them, but I do have a, a overall best. And that was Philip Rivers being just good enough to get Drew Brees shipped to New Orleans because, right. yeah. You know, had Drew Brees not uh, went to New Orleans, I think he would have taken more advantage of having Antonio Gates and Ladaney and Tomlinson on his offense. And, uh, you know, maybe we're talking about the chargers having a super bowl victory or two in the AFC West and they don't. So they'll, they'll always be like the lovable loser, little brother, you know, until they do get that super bowl victory. If they ever get that super bowl victory. Right. Yeah. No, John Lynch kind of was the reason that, yeah, the Saints have John Lynch to thank for a lot of things because he was the guy who injured Drew Brees' shoulder. Yep. Uh, I think if not for the shoulder, Drew Brees might have gone to Miami and and been a Dolphin with yeah. Nick Saban. And that and see that's they chose Dante Culpepper. That's a double edged sword because, well, no, it's just the Dolphins fucked up because if Drew Brees went to the AFC East, maybe the Patriots don't get as far as they do one or two seasons. You know what I mean? Maybe the Dolphins are a competitive team uh, that they face and maybe they get bounced one or two times from the playoffs or don't get into the playoffs. You just don't know. Yeah. I mean, I I like the pairing of, of Drew Brees and and Sean Payton better than, than Nick Saban who. uh, Yeah. He quit. Basically resigned. (laughs) A year later so um I, I think uh history played out probably the way it was supposed to in that situation <clears throat> yeah and obviously like i was 
I'm sure you felt the same way, but it was a little, it was very sad seeing Drew Brees at the end of the the Sunday game against the Buccaneers. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I uh, don't get You're me wrong. Probably blinded like, by watching watching Brady. I think I was just more pissed off that uh, the loyalty to Drew Brees kept him in the game, and they lost. So my anger would, was not allowing me to feel sympathetic to Drew Brees's, you know, great career and that it, Fair enough. it's over. Yeah, because um, no one was rooting harder for the Saints than you in that game. No, and I, I was just so mad they lost. <laughs> yeah, uh, and here's the thing. Like, if you want three interceptions, uh, Jameis Winston will give you those, but he'll also give you, you know, three, three or four touchdowns. touchdowns. With it. Yeah, that's what, like right. – as soon as he came in and threw that touchdown, I was like, they should, they should put him in the game. Like at least for like a series or something to. Yeah. But you're not going to do that to a guy like Drew Brees. There's, you know, loyalty there. Yeah. I respect that decision. But if you're talking from a pure football stance, like you should have switched quarterbacks in that game. Um, right although, like, and, and the Taysom Hill being out thing because you can yeah. put in Taysom Hill and like it's not you know disrespecting Breeze because they do it all the time right but, no it's just uh yeah. unfortunate game just yank him like that but that yeah it was it was uh unfortunate and and sad it was sad uh, too bad though too bad too bad because right now We've got DraftKings. The return we have all been waiting for is finally here. UFC's most notorious icon is stepping back into the octagon this Saturday. Be sure to check out DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC for a shot to turn $1 into $257. That's right. New new users can bet $1 on Conor McGregor to win by knockout in the first round. And if he does, you'll be cashing in. $257. $257. Bet a little, win a lot. It's that simple. While we are all excited for this year, this weekend's premiere of UFC, let's not forget football is in the midst of the championship playoff game. So head to the App Store and check out the great playoff promotions. DraftKings safe, it is secure, it is reliable, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. So again, download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code DNBR when you sign up to turn $1 into $257 if McGregor wins by first-round knockout. Place your bet and watch the fists fly this weekend. That's code DNBR for new players to get $257 if McGregor wins by a first-round knockout. Limited time, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You got to be 21. Colorado only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem call. 1-800-522-4700. And that's the sexiest gambling problem phone number you will ever, ever listen to. Okay. We talked a lot of uh, Philip Rivers. Now, I want to talk about Von Miller and George Payton. First of all, first, I heard John Elway said George Payton's name wrong. Somebody yeah, I heard told me George that. Patrick. He said George Patrick? Yeah. <laughs> Question, good sign or bad sign? Because. For who? For, for who? John Elway or for us? No, John Elway is probably losing his mind. Um, I'm talking about uh, luck-wise. Because when he thanked himself – during yeah. the firing of uh, John Fox, Broncos go on to win the Super Bowl. True. But then he mispronounces Case Keenum in his introduction, and that was mm-hmm. not good. So LA's one for one there, or one for two. This, good sign or bad sign? Uh, I'm, I'm cool with the hiring, and I like it, so I'm going to – say it's a good sign i'm just good gonna sign. do a little confirmation bias on my part say absolutely a good sign <laughs> i don't know who george patrick is i'm sure there's someone famous with that name um but again it's just because sometimes like i read it and i still want to say patent but i know it's Peyton, and it's gonna take me a while to correct <clears throat> so really you just gotta throw that y in there and 
you're not going to run into these problems anymore. Yeah. Uh, change the spelling. We've mentioned that. Uh, I watched his press conference. And what I learned is if John Elway is not your GM, uh, GM press conferences are really fucking boring. Maybe the most yeah. boring thing I've ever sat sat through and, and watched in my life. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. We're never going to see George Payton scooting through the streets of downtown Miami at night. Nope. Uh, or coming out of a bar at midnight and running into the fellas at TMZ and Twice. giving them a good bud. Yep. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's a little too. Uh, he seems like a family man. He seems like he's a little too buttoned up for that kind of. A little too put together. <laughs> yeah. So will he miss like a crucial, uh, you know, fax, paper delivery when you're trying to sign, resign an outside pass rusher? Maybe nope. not. Nope. But will he give us uh, cool sound bites and kind of go balls to the wall and draft Chad Kelly nope. with the last pick of the draft? Also, no. Yep. Uh, I was trying to, like, figure out what he was going to do, you know, as a GM, see if there are any nuggets in there. Yeah. Uh, we don't know. No. You know, he said, no. he says, he said, uh, we'll be aggressive, but not reckless. So, basically, he said, we'll get guys we want to get, but we won't go after guys we think are st- stupid to go after. <laughs> so... <laughs> I think, uh, he, you know, and he said he wants to build the team through the draft. I think every GM. Would has, yeah, has, anybody, has any GM ever been like, I don't give a shit about the draft? No. Be all, I mean, maybe like uh, if you press Sean McVay and Les Snead, it'd be hard for them to say otherwise at this point. But yeah. I think all GMs enjoy using the draft as a resource for acquiring. Yeah, draft and uh, develop. I think that was the key. And I think – maybe he'll be a little more inclined to sign players to second contracts. Uh, yeah. We've seen Elway kind of walk away from some players that, you know, could have gotten second contracts, but like the big guy, like Von Miller, Demarius Thomas, you know, they paid the guys who really performed. Um, so I think maybe if you're just trying to look into it for this season, probably Justin Simmons is coming back. If, that's really the approach he wants to take because that's a guy. He did say got. something about Simmons that was pretty reassuring. I thought, um, good. So I think, yeah, I feel I feel better about Simmons. Now. Yeah. So we'll see. You know, like we'll have a better read on him after the draft. Like we've been through free agency and the draft, and you'll get a good beat on you know how the Broncos are going to approach those things with him in it. Right now, it's just a bunch of guessing. Uh, but it feels like a. I think most people outside of the Broncos organization look at it as a good hire. That's not all, th- yeah. that doesn't always mean that it is, but uh, it seems like he's very well respected across the league from everything that, like that I've read about it. So you hope that's a good sign, right? And the fact that he's been doing interviews for a couple of years and probably turned down yeah. a couple opportunities gives me, uh, you know gives me a good feeling about this plus yeah, he said he, he saw, wanted to be here yeah um, he saw the roster and i'm i'm sure he we're, we're, i guess he interviewed just here in detroit so maybe looking at Detroit's situation in our situation deciding that you know, denver's a better place to be maybe not uh <laughs> you, you know maybe not that uh high of a bar to uh to jump over there but plus you know <laughs> Deciding to live in Denver, or Detroit, you know, not much of a competition, no. in my own personal opinion. But yeah, he seems well respected and and waited for the chance he, you know, for the opportunity he really wanted, which uh, makes me feel good about our roster too. I think. Yeah, <clears throat> and I think I heard on the radio that he said, or that Vic Fangio said he wants uh george to get his read on drew lock before yeah. talking to him and uh pat Shermer, and i think that's probably a really smart move by vic fangio to say like you look at it before you get any of our opinions on this guy because I'm just like i'm kind of laughing at the, the idea of that and like george payton 
uh, clicks on like just YouTube searches, Drew Locke highlights. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> bombs highlights. <laughs> and it's like, uh, you know, 20 percent luck 15 percent skill <laughs> like that's the soundtrack and it's like just the good plays he's whoa he's like whoa this dude's sick <laughs> all right i'm gonna talk to the coach now <laughs> he's not actually like, breaking down tape or anything no yo vic just link me to uh your your three favorite drew lock youtube highlight videos <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh mm-hmm. all right so we'll see what happens with old georgie boy well, George, I mean, my I guess my last thing on, on this subject is you probably just look at Minnesota and, and their philosophy the last you know, 10 years, and that'll be a pretty good indication. Not yeah. that he was responsible for everything there, but, like, people tend to generally, like, imitate um, their, their role models and higher-ups in those situations, and he seems like he has a lot of respect for those people. So, yeah, I think he's pretty <clears throat> forward to And, uh, you know, the Vikings have, outside of, they had offensive line issues for, you know, a really long time, like the Broncos, but um, they put together, you know, good rosters. They've drafted some really impactful players. uh, And they've, you know, that Stephon Diggs. And signed a lot of impactful players. Yeah, and the Diggs trade was, like, bold, and it worked out. And so you just kind of hope. I'm drafted guy too what's that like found talent like the wide receivers like you get the a first rounder and justin jefferson who's been great stefan diggs i think is a fifth rounder and then adam thielen was undrafted yeah so you get some anywhere anywhere they come no and that's what you want take them all over the board uh and yeah we'll see what happens we'll do less guessing I'm and more stick what's that I'm optimistic right yeah. now. Why not? I mean, you got to be. It's the off season. Hey. Uh, less optimistic about one Von Miller right now. Um, mm-hmm. So this this news came out. What was it Friday? Thursday or Friday last week? It was when we were podcasting. Oh, you're right. It was when we were podcasting, and yeah. you said I waited to tell you until after the podcast because I didn't want to be the another then another bad news breaker of Von Miller news to you yeah. during a podcast, uh, which I, I, re- I respect. Yeah. And it's good because like these things, I like to wait until you get more info. So Von Miller uh, under investigation from the Parker police department for domestic violence. Um, this was after a bunch of text messages were leaked between him and his former fiance uh megan uh damn it i didn't write her last name down megan megan denise denise yes two first names um yeah probably a middle name so some people think he's been arrested that's not true he's not been arrested they're looking into the situation and since this megan denise released statement uh i've written that down so i'll just read what she said In light of recent media reports regarding my relationship with Vaughn, I feel that I need to address a couple things. She wrote, first and foremost, at no point in our relationship was there any type of physical abuse or violence whatsoever. For anyone to say otherwise or to speculate is wrong with regards to my social media posts. A part was misconstrued and taken out of context. I do regret making a private situation public and in doing so bringing unwanted attention to both Vaughn and myself. Vaughn and I are excited to be welcoming our baby into the world and are committed to raising our child with love and compassion together as a family. So that's her statement. Uh, Sounds very well polished. So I'm guessing it went through some PR filters. That's a guess. I don't know. Paints Vaughn in a very good light. Uh, So I don't know what actually happened in this situation and I don't like to guess. And since it's uh, not Antonio Brown, um, since Von Miller plays for the Broncos. Uh, I'm going to wait until we get something from the investigation to really like figure it out. Uh, I don't like talking about private messages between people. I think it's just kind of I don't like either. A, and also, a like, thing. to that point, they probably just shouldn't be shared in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there was a lot of um, 
yeah, I don't think there's a lot to gain from her doing that. Um, it just puts a lot of pressure on Vaughn, which could put pressure on her financially and could lead to some bad decisions. And, you know, if there is something to conceal, that would lead to them concealing the truth about something, which makes it messier. And, and that, this is why I like the Tyree Hill, you know, the second Tyree Hill thing got kind of fucked up and people, you know, people are able to, com- you know, decide whether or not you know their preferred narrative is the truth in this situation because you're hearing different things from different sides you don't know like uh people's incentive for saying certain things is so it's messy and i don't want to think about it or deal with it as much as i can um but i think what boils down to at the end of the day is like if he is arrested for for something really bad like domestic violence or you know things of things of that nature um then i mean the choice at this point like it's pretty easy like you just have to let him go i think and that doesn't mean he can't play again or yeah um you know have a career afterwards or like you can't you know hope he gets better and and makes amends and can welcome him back at some point but if that's the case then you kind of just have to cut him loose and um that's that for a while, unfortunately. Yeah, but if we're gonna let it play out. We're gonna let you know. We're not gonna jump to any conclusions. That's kind of yeah. the point. I think it's a, it's it's very different if he actually gets charged for something because then yeah. you know they believe there's enough evidence where he could have done something. And so right. until you get to that point, it's you don't want to play the guessing game because the chances are you'll look stupid for saying something. Stupid. Yeah. Like we're trying to speculate. Well, I mean, the point is, I think you and I aren't trying to speculate. Yeah. And it's like, we can. if he did, if, if, if he's guilty of it, if he did some sort committed, some sort of crime, domestic violence, and I don't want him yeah. on the team at all ever again. Like it's, if that's the facts, the the truth. Right. So like, I don't change that opinion based on a player's skill level or, or talent or what he means to the team. Uh, It's just like one of those things you don't want as part of your organization, but again, they haven't gotten to that point yet. And right. You're not going to like, you're not going to cut a guy over an investigation. No, He, he may very well not be with the team regardless next season. Right. Yeah. For other well, reasons too. This is this is George Payton's first one of his yeah. first big decisions yeah, he has to make. To the organization. Because like even if Vaughn's innocent here, this is a kind of situation that gives you maybe the flexibility to move on from him if you think financially that's the best decision for the team to sort of shape you know, the, the personnel that you want. And it's, it's hard to say like how effective Von Miller will be next season coming back from a season long injury. Um, I think I would bet on Von Miller being good and being effective uh, just because that's what we've seen from him in the past. And uh, the, the hard part is this year with the salary cap coming down, if you're going to be making 17 and a half million in room by moving on from him. And that means you can definitely sign Justin Simmons. You can bring Shelby Harris back and then maybe, you know, get another piece you want in free agency in a greater area of need. Then maybe that's, that's, this is the time to do it. And you don't catch the backlash you might've, you know, gotten if you tried to do this with Von Miller uh this last but you know before this season or something yeah yeah like i think for peyton in a weird way like we don't want this to be the case obviously but if it did come out that like you know something bad happened it makes the decision very easy for him yeah and he gets like he gets to start his career um without that little footnote like oh he his first thing he did was you know, cut Von Miller, then he signs, you know, Von Miller signs with the Chiefs and has 25 sacks the next season. So, you know, good going, idiot. It's like, no, well, he, he did what he had to do. Um, yeah, it w- because right now you're in a spot where you're like, you probably can't trade Von Miller either. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I generally, like, obviously, I hope that's not the case. 
Um, but it very well could be. So we're yeah. just thinking about the possibilities here. Um, we're not, you know, we're not judge, jury, and executioner here. No. Judge Judy and executioner. Judge Judy and executioner. We don't want to be. Her new yeah. show. <laughs> Yeah, Judge she Judy does, sentences does all of it. people to death and then murders them herself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she does lethal injection either. I think she goes full like guillotine. Yeah, it, no, it's bloody. It's bloody. Yeah, and she gives a very condescending, like rolls her eyes look before she like pulls the thing and <laughs> takes the head off. I've seen a lot of Judge Judy the last year. Uh my wife, while she was pregnant. And on maternity uh-huh. leave, uh, enjoyed some daytime Judge Judy. So I'd walk downstairs and let me tell you, Judge Judy is funny. Judge Judy, she got some brass balls and she don't she don't take no bullshit in her, her courtroom. And no, she just, yeah. like uh, I never paid attention to a show like that ever in my life. But like I'd be grabbing lunch and it would be on and just some of the shit she would say to people. It's like an older woman just telling these young people how stupid they are a lot of the time. Uh, yeah, it's, it's probably sad. doesn't get the, the credit it deserves. It's very entertaining. I well, see why that show has been on for like 100 years. Yeah, I don't like I don't think I've I've seen it. but I don't think I've ever like watched it on purpose. Yeah, I think usually the TV is set to Fox after, uh, you know, a late game. Like World Series or or um, you know like a playoff game like last week and then you turn it on the next day and it's still um, there and it's still on Judge Judy you know? yeah or you're like at, in down, the waiting like, room oh, somewhere for a second yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big, it's a great waiting room style show uh, absolutely well that's all I wanted to talk about today um. I think we did a pretty good job. We will have Dan Mitchell back tomorrow to talk Bills, uh, Bills Chiefs. So it's an return. AFC. Oh, wait, here's one return thing I want to talk about. Man. Yeah. Chargers hired Brandon Staley, right? Right. New yeah. head coach. Defensive coordinator for the Rams for one season. I forgot Brandon Staley was with the Broncos the year before. Yeah, he was the outside linebackers coach outside linebackers coach and when he left i was like i don't give a shit like we've got vic fangio you know like what's losing some young outside linebackers coach uh then he coaches up the rams defense and now he's a head coach and it just made me think like why did the broncos let him go you know uh i think they tried to keep him or i don't know i think it's one of those things where like they weren't gonna get they weren't gonna promote him well, that's and, that's the thing. Like it's, and I'm not so saying you have any reason to get rid of Ed Donatel, you know. I guess. I mean, it's just could. It might uh, not be popular though. I think it was a thing where like they just like wanted to give him an opportunity to advance his career. Yeah. No, that's nice. But it's uh, doesn't help your your organization because maybe nah, having him at defensive coordinator that. over Ed Donatel would have been the really smart thing to do. But maybe, you know, Vic Fangio, he's comfortable with Ed Donatel. Like, there's a relationship there. You're not going to break that up, right? But maybe that hinders you from bringing in a young gun who's now coaching the Chargers. But let's say he's a bad head coach for the Chargers. Then it's a smart play by the Broncos by letting him go to coach down a division rival. You know, there's a lot of ways to look at this, Will. Yeah, a lot of ways to slice it. I would also point out that Ed Donatel didn't have Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey to work with this year. No, he did While not. Well, Brandon Staley most certainly did. He had Aaron Perfect. Donald, Jalen Ramsey. One thing Ramsey. that got me kind of upset was like seeing Justin Hollins playing so many snaps for the Rams. But, like, we drafted that guy and just let him go for nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> Started for the Rams. I don't know if he's good, but... <laughs> Just like seeing him in the playoffs kind of made me mad. It's like, hey, that's our guy. Yeah. No, and that's maybe something, you know, hopefully. Yeah. George he, Payton. He, he like went there with Staley, I'm pretty sure. What? I think like Hollins went there with Staley too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Uh, like those moves happen. Like they released Hollins and then Staley's like, let's get this guy over here. Yeah. All right. I mean. He had three sacks this year. Okay. 
Whatever. Whatever. Broncos actually could have used that depth, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Although that's Jeremiah true. Jeremiah Tauchu, uh, not a bad good. guy they brought in to 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 fill in, you know, from time to time. No, he's a good vet. I like him. He had five sacks this year. Yeah, in so pretty Holland. limited games. Yeah, thirteen games, five starts. Why is he? He doesn't get enough credit. I don't think. No, I don't think he does. Yeah. Former he's Charger. Good. Good guy. All right. What? That's it. We're done. Thanks for listening We're to Let's Get Broncos. Make sure you subscribe to wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, we drop them here Bench on YouTube. Warmer Brew. Benchwarmerbrew.com. John Elway, good night. ACL, his luck to you. <laughs>